Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd ahabat tafila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not order us to be into groups and sects and to divide and we know that divisions and joining new groups and new, new ideologies and having new afkar or ways of thinking that these are not in accordance with Islamic principles these are mithmum and that's why the Prophet Sallallahu said, If Tarakat al Yahud al Eta was a bain firka, if Tarakat al Nasara al Natain was a bain firka, was it of Tariku Hadi Umala Falata was a bain firka, Kulahaf in Nara the Wahida, Kulaman here Yara Sulullah, Kalaman Kana, Mithli Makana, Alehi was Habi. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the Jews were breaking the 71 sects, Christians 72 sects, my woman is 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. He said, Who are they, Yara Sulullah? Those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَسَابَكُونَ الْأَوَلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْصَارِ وَلَذِينَ اَعْتَبُهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, uh, from those fir the first ones, وَسَابَكُونَ الْأَوَلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْصَارِ From the Muhajirin, those people who made hijrah to Medina, from Mecca, the believers, the mu'mineen. Uh, Muhajirin wal Ansar and those who receive them from Ahla Medina, the Ansar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them and they were pleased and they're pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who follow them. And that's the point. The shahid is that we are ordered to be from Ahla Sunnati wal Jama'at. We're ordered to follow the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa Allah wa ati rasul. Obey Allah and obey His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are ordered to be one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And here all of you stand fast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, the asl or the origin of that command in the book of Allah or in the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam means that that is uh, an obligation unless there's other evidence to show that it is, uh, it takes another hukum, you know, it's uh, mustahab or mubah or what have you. And so it lets us know, because this was in the imperative form, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to be unified. And here all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah, and do not divide. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, <clears throat> mentioned in countless hadith, he mentioned that we would split. He mentioned, he said, Allah uh, 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 فَإِنَّ مَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ فِي سِيَرَا اخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةُ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِينَ عَذُوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِذْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْتَتَرَ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلُّ بِدَةٍ ضَلَالَ The Prophet ﷺ said, uh, Hear and obey the, mus the uh, leader that is uh, charged over you in authority. Even if it was an Ethiopian slave, and that whoever lives after me or li lives long after me will see many differences. We see many differences. And then he gave the prescription. It's upon you, my sunnah, the sunnah of the rightly guided khalifa, meaning Abu Bakr, or Umar, or Uthman, or Ali, radiallahu ta'ala, and Majma'een. And then the Prophet وسلم, cling to, said, cling to it with your molar teeth, uh, and beware of innovation, for every innovation leads astray. So we have so many nasul, so many texts which show that that dividing is sinful, that being united is ordered in an obligation, that following the sunnah is what we unite upon. It's not follow. We can't have newly invented matters, and that bid'ah going trying to unite upon things which are ghayr mashroor, newly invented matters, is mithmum as well. It's also sinful. And that's why we can't say, and we just say, okay, yeah, these guys are whirling 
dervishes and they spin around and they make vicar until spit comes out of their mouth and yes those are our, our brothers and we should worship graves with them and we should dance until we just almost lose our intellect or we become ecstatic and this is going to bring us closer to Allah. No, we can't say that that is a methodology that's acceptable in Islam and we cannot unite with them for that reason. Now, if they come to the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and leave off those bid'ah and leave off those things which go against the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, then we accept them and we embrace them and we love them in accordance with their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, we can't be united with Akhwana Muslimin and their their political uh, ideologies and, and, and foreign, ide foreign ideologies that they incorporate into their methodology uh, of practicing in Islam. We can't unite with them. Likewise, or in addition, we cannot unite with the Tekfiri Khawarij because they are a people of bloodshed and they are people of deviance that will soon turn on you and make takfir of you and make your blood lawful and rob you blind and spread the blood of you and your mother easily. And this shows us, Sahabat Tifillah, that that unity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling for, وَاَتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Adhere all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and don't divide. So what's the Habli Allah? The Habli Allah is the Qur'an. That means we can't deviate from the Qur'an. And the Habli Allah, as some of the Mufassirin say, uh, it's the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we can't deviate from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And some of them say it's the Qur'an and the Sunnah or it's Islam in general. So it shows us, Ahabit Allah, that there are principles, there are things that we have to adhere to that have to fit that criterion. And that's why the Prophet وسلم, said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdi. It's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifa. That's what we're ordered to do. We're ordered to follow the Salaf al Salih. The Prophet وسلم, said, Khairan as qarni thumma ladina yulunuhum thumma ladina yulunuhum. The, the best of you is those is my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. Uh, Imam Uzai, Rahimullah Ta'ala, said, Fasbir nafsik ala sunnah. وَقِذْ حَيْثْ وَقِذْ الْقَوْمِ وَقُلْ فِيمَا قَالُوا وَكَفْ عَمَّا كَفُوا Imam Uzai, rahmatullahi alayhi, rahmatullahi wasi'a, he said, be patient, uh, be patient, uh, have, you know, be patient on the sunnah. Khalas, be patient on the sunnah. He commanded you, be patient on the sunnah. This is the method of the salaf. Be patient on the sunnah because there's going to be so many distractions, so many things that take you off the sunnah. You're going to, even your own desires are going to be like, well, you know, it's this time uh, in, in history and, you know, it's so different than then and we need to think about this and this is a different kind of maslaha. And, you know, there's going to be things that challenge you. There's going to be new things you're confronted with and new ideologies that sound good and new ways that sound good and new uh, methodologies of fiqh. I'm not saying, you know, uh, fatawa. I'm talking about new methodologies of fiqh. That sound good to you. They feel good. But that's not going to bring you, that's not being patient upon the sunnah. That's what Imam Uzai said. Then he said, and stop where the people stop. Meaning the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, majma'een. Stop where they stopped. They stopped with the sunnah. They understood the sunnah of the message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa fassara sunnah, wa kanu mawjood, mawjoodun. They were there when the revelation was revealed. They were there when the Prophet ﷺ was practicing Islam and exemplifying Islam and teaching them Islam. So they know Islam better than we do. And that's why we follow the sunnah, the sunnah of the rightly guided Khulafa al-Rashidin. That their sunnah is also incorporated in that. And so it shows us the Sabil al-Mu'mineen is the Sabil al-Salaf al and he said, and قُلْ فِي مَا قَالُوا And say what they said. So be careful about new statements and new ways of talking about the religion if it, if it doesn't have a salaf. As some of the ulama mentioned, and it probably comes from a statement of the salaf, مَنْ سَبَقَ بِهَذَا قَوْلُ And I think it's a statement of one of the salaf. مَنْ سَبَقَ بِهَذَا قَوْلُ They'll say, you know, so when someone says something, and it sounds a bit strange, they'll say, who preceded you in that statement? You know, which one of the imams of the salaf preceded you in that statement? And stop where they stopped. And there's safety in your deen that way. Now, I want to address something. 
A particular individual calling himself ex-medically, and I, I've seen this uh, countless times. And for one, I want to just be clear, I'm not a medkali. And I really have an idea of what, I know what's meant behind that, but I don't believe there's really a sect of medkhalis. And in Arabic, those people who attack Sheikh Rabi' they say mudakhila. Okay, so regardless, the point is, for a person to be an ex Medhali. And this person keeps bringing up these Tekfiri and defense Tekfiris on my site. So I wanted to address him personally. So take this to heart. And perhaps it'll be a lesson for all of us that we can benefit from. So I wanted to address this because it shows that there's a type of misguidance from your Usul Aslan, from your foundation. Why? Because for you, instead of adhering and saying you're from Ahl Sunnah, that would have been sufficient. Or saying you're from the Salafi'in, that would be sufficient. Or saying that you follow the methodology of Ahl Athar or Ahl Hadith or the Salaf Salih or, or something like this, which is known to Ahl Sunnah from Asma, from the names, this would have sufficed you. But when you took it upon yourself, and those people, and I'll admit, there are people who blind follow the sheikh. And he is our sheikh. We have love for him. But we don't follow him in everything. We don't agree with everything he says. Because no one, because it, it, mainly because the Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, All the children of Adam make mistakes and the best of those are those who make tawbah. You know, who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why we don't, I don't call myself a Fozani. I don't call myself a, a, an, an Albani. I don't call myself a Rahali. I don't call myself a Suhaimi or any other Al Qab. And, and even much greater in knowledge than them, I don't call myself a Benbazi or a, a you know, a, an Albani, as I said, or a, a, a Al Wadi or something like this, or Shanqiti or anything. But instead, I just refer to myself as Salafi. I'm a Muslim. I follow Bi'idnillah, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And the person who takes those, those names, it's as if they're making a new hizb. And I don't agree with those brothers. I know some brothers that took, they started their website, the Medhalis and stuff. I think that was incorrect. That was not something... Uh, even if they asked certain mashayikh and they agreed to that, that's, it's opening a very bad door. Because why would you ever do that? Why would you, you know, make something that we don't see our ulama doing and make a new hizb? Because even though we love those mashayikh, for example, Sheikh Zayd Ahmed Khali, Rahmatullah you have Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi, Sheikh Rabi' and others, but we don't blind follow them. And we don't make ta'asab to them. And so the person who took a name like this and now refers to them ex medically, meaning they fight them and disagree with everything, basically what they say, and they love the takfiris because those are the people they... Uh, it shows that they are mis they're from misguidance to misguidance. Because they were blind following to now to blind following Ahl al so it's a very dangerous thing. And the scholars in the past and the present have spoken extensively about ta'asab and making a new madhab and following someone blindly who is not evidence in and of themselves, meaning that no one is evidence. If I say, if anything, before all of them, then we should be uh, uh, Abu Bakris or Khattabis following Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Or Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, or Uthman ibn Athan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, ajma'een. We should be blindly following them, but no, even that would be madhmoom. We cannot blindly follow even the Sahaba in everything they did because they had amura ijtihadat. Some of them maybe didn't hear a particular hadith, whatever the case may be, but they had their own ijtihad. But we're ordered to follow Muhammad ibn Abdullah, ittiba'ah. So, I just wanted to mention that, and 
hopefully that'll be a benefit to all of us. And for, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me for anything I said that was incorrect and accept anything that I said that was correct. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless it to be of benefit and not a waste of time and a waste of breath and a distortion. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.